Hello, welcome to the Ironwood Strength Show. Uh, gonna go over, gonna just give you something to think about today. Uh, just finished testing my lifts. I'm gonna give you an explanation of where I'm at, what I'm getting out of this, and kind of what's uh, where we could look at this or how we could look at this. Um, so I just got through the end of the year. Um, I don't haven't competed in about seven years. So to keep, it's always about the pursuit of strength for me. So I can't just go in and work out. It's always about the pursuit of strength. Um, did fairly well kind of rebuilding my strength after I lost a lot until 2020, 2020, um, everyone knows that is the year of COVID, but really that did not affect me. Actually, I started out doing very well because of that, because I was at home a lot and just had time to train. Unfortunately, I took a new job during that time, which was extremely demanding, and all of my numbers went, just plummeted uh, south. So, I am now, finally, 2020, 2021, 2022, all bad, okay? My strength dropped, um quite significantly so 2023 began to turn that around and really had a good 2023 today i'm going to be utilizing the overhead press as an example so i've never been a good overhead presser when i was competing and i was at my best my best overhead press um, standing military press overhead press was I believe it was 187 for a double. I don't, I did, it's not something that I really kept PRs on because it wasn't, I wasn't competing in an overhead press. So I believe it was 187 for a double. Through, and I, that's just typically something that is very overhead pressing, is very difficult for me to keep my strength up. So I really have to work at it. Um, or at least have it very present, okay? During this time where I lost all my strength, uh, I got to where I couldn't even overhead press 135, okay? I was, I was well below that. So, got it built back up in June of 2023, I did 145. Fast forward till now, okay, to December, and I, I test my, my now, I have six lifts that I test, uh, of course, a squat bench and, and sumo deadlift, I also do conventional deadlift, uh, military press, and pull-ups, so with the conventional military and pull-ups, or the overhead press and pull-ups, those are kind of like my secondary, I, that's not of extreme importance, but they're more developmental in nature, but I do test them so I know where I'm at and what sort of progress I'm making. So, June, I do 145 and standing overhead press. December comes. I go through that time period from July through December. I never put more than 105 pounds over my head. Remember, my best was 145 in June. July through December. Never more than 105 over my head. That's 72%. Okay, only 72%. When I tested in November, or in December, at the end of December, I pressed 150. Okay, so what we like to think about as strength coaches and as lifters, the only way to get stronger, according to what we, and I'm using the term we loosely as in just stereotypically lifters and strength coaches. Strength coaches that value strength. Okay, because not all strength coaches value strength, which completely blows my mind. But there are strength coaches out there that don't care about strength. They look at everything else. Um, but this kind of goes against, we like to say that that you have to lift heavy 
in order to get stronger and you have to lift at least to a certain amount of intensity to um, to at least maintain your strength. I think that that is untrue. If you are smart about how you manage your volume, that you can actually build strength and definitely maintain strength by not pushing heavy weights, by not focusing on heavy weights. I'm not saying they should never be in there. I'm just saying they don't have to be a mainstay of the program. Why do I say this? One, there's the example that I just gave. Okay, In six months' time, I never lifted more than 72%. And to be honest, most of my lifting was less than 95 pounds. Okay, The majority of the lifting overhead was less than 95 pounds. This is not the first time I've done this. Okay, I did this uh, a couple of years ago. Actually, in 2022, I was changing things up, trying to figure out what worked. My overhead press just became an assistance exercise, and I literally, for four months' time, never lifted more than 75 pounds until the last couple workouts, I built it up. And literally, the like with the last two workouts, I went heavier. And then on test day, my max was only down five pounds in four months. So you can say what you want about whether I improved or got worse in that that first example, I improved by five pounds. Now, being 44 years old and having trained for 30 years, sometimes a five-pound improvement is celebratory, okay? You are excited about five pounds. We'll just look at it as I didn't make progress. Just for the sake of this argument, we'll look at it as I didn't make progress. Now, the 2022 example, I trained for four months, never lifted more than 75 pounds except for two occasions, and at the end... I only lost five pounds. Well, I think that's close enough to say I made no progress, nor did I get worse. Okay, so what does this, and you can look at this, you can say, oh, well, that's just your training. That's, you can't, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Fine, take it with a grain of salt, but think about what this is saying. Okay, think about how this could be applied. In 2022, when I was doing that, I was doing five sets of, I believe, 10 uh, every day, or not every day, once a week. So every day that I trained, I went in and I did the same thing, five sets of 10 at 75 pounds. And I did that for once a week, no other overhead pressing. That was the only overhead pressing I was doing. I did it once a week for four months. At the end, the last two workouts, I went, I think, five sets of eight and then five sets of six. And on both of those workouts, I allowed myself to move the weight up. Uh, I don't remember how much I got to, but only two workouts. And then I tested and I was only down five pounds. While at the same time, my other numbers, my bench numbers were down considerably, like 20 pounds. Okay, My bench, I was pushing heavy. With exercise variations, I follow kind of the west side-ish. You rotate exercises uh, to build the parts of the lift and to build the technique and the musculature and the strength involved in different parts of the lift to carry that over. Okay, I was doing that regularly and my bench still went down. Okay, My overhead press, however, did not when I was lifting much lighter. Again, these aren't the only two examples of my lifting. If I go back to when I was competing and I was really kind of, I was in my 30s, um, kind of lower to mid 30s. So it's in that time period where you still have a lot of strength to gain, but it's also not nearly as easy as when you're in your mid 20s. Okay, it is a lot different. And when you get to 40, it's a whole lot different. So 
I was in that time frame where things were really kind of slowing down, but you still can make progress. And what I was finding was my deadlift, my my other lifts, my squat, my bench were actually going up when my average intensity was only in the 70% range. Okay. And I don't remember, I, I think I wrote something about this at the time, but, and yes, I had heavy days. I had more heavy days back then, but I was considerably improving by controlling my volume, by managing my volume, by managing my technique, and utilizing the heavy lifts. Um, it was kind of a block model, so it was, there were periods of time where I was very heavy, but there were a lot of periods of time where I was lighter, and my strength was built through volume, and through proper exercise selection, and proper, um, basically, load management. So my takeaway from this is that strength cannot, it can be built, but the bigger takeaway is that it can be maintained by controlling volume, okay? Controlling your volume, managing your volume in an appropriate manner will you, will suggest have significant effects on you maintaining strength. For lifters, you don't like to hear the word maintain. It's it's kind of a um, kind of like a four letter word. You don't want to hear that because you're about building strength. But you can't build strength as much as some people claim without um, unless you're genetically superior, unless you are. Um, possibly using using drugs, steroids. It it's you'll make, you'll build strength for certain periods of time and then you will uh, throw that plateau word in there. You'll plateau for a while. So that's just natural. That's how strength and performance works. This is not something new. We just don't like to accept that fact. So but when you get into, as strength coaches, and you're looking at athletes, you don't need to be improving strength during the season. If you have younger athletes, you will improve strength during the season. That's They're going to be getting stronger, especially at the high school level and even through those first couple of years of college. But then as you get into that, maybe some in the second year, definitely in the third, fourth, and fifth year, um, Building strength in season is probably counterproductive to sports performance. So, and increasing the risk of injury. So, we want to maintain. Um, and it doesn't mean you should never have heavy days in season. But it does show what I'm saying here does show or does lead you to believe. It gives you something to think about that by having an appropriate amount of volume. Your strength can still be maintained. You don't have to come in and have max effort work every week during the season. Just so you know, that's a bad idea. Okay? Control the volume. Okay? And your strength gains will... You're not going to lose anything. You'll be fine. Okay? Um, what did my training look like in these past six months just so you guys have an idea of what I was doing I did the first probably two months doing nothing but the Z press my idea was that it was going to help what a lot of people say it's going to help correct posture it's going to help uh, correct imbalances I did the first part of that with dumbbells only and then I progressed to the bar um, I had no success with all the things that they say the Z-Press does, uh, correct shoulder function. I had no success in any of that. Um, in fact, I think the, I didn't hardly, my wife was lifting almost as much as I was because my posture is so bad and my shoulder function is probably fairly poor. Um, I struggled with that and I never got any better. 
um, or any benefits were just minimal. I don't know that I lifted more than 75 pounds during that those first couple months. And the dumbbells were extremely light, like 20s or 25s. Okay. After that, I went to different variations of the overhead press. I did a phase where I cut the overhead pressing out and just focused on incline. Um, the last period, or the two last periods of training, three weeks in a deload for both of them. The one I strictly focused on volume. I think I went four sets of 10 week one. This is two phases out, four sets of 10 week one on an overhead variation. I don't remember what, I think it was all seated overhead press. Okay, so seated overhead press, four sets of 10. Week two was five sets of eight. Week three, I pushed the weight, but the rule was in these three weeks, no failure. So I had to get all my reps. I was I could not pick a set um, that I could possibly fail in. So I had to get all my reps. Week three was six sets of six. I allowed myself to work up and be a little bit more aggressive with still keeping that in mind that I didn't want to fail. Then I deloaded. The next three weeks, I changed the exercise every week. The first week was um, seated overhead pin press. I set the bar. It was probably about chin height, so a little bit higher than where I would normally press from. And this, I was seated, pressed directly overhead. Um, I believe that was sets of six. I worked up to a heavy set of six and it was challenging. The second week I did sets of five, but I strained my pec benching that first week. And even though the overhead press didn't bother me that first week, the second week it did um, quite considerably. So I didn't go very heavy. In fact, it bothered me more as I went. So I think that's the week I got up to 105. That was a standing overhead press with the bar set right about shoulder level. Okay, that one got my pec, uh, aggravated it. So I think it, that was, I did 105 and I shut it down. And then the third week, I didn't do more than 60, I think 65 pounds just because I was scared of my pec hurting and I was wanting to focus on testing in a couple weeks. So um, didn't do anything there. And then of course I tested a couple weeks later and that's when I did my 150. So um, in my mind, I never went heavy. So in my mind, volume is extremely important to maintaining and even more more volume may be more important to maintaining strength than heavy weights it is also relevant to consider it a factor in increasing strength without necessarily having a lot of heavy training involved. Okay, I'm not, to truly um, display your true maximum strength, you need to have heavy training, you need to have max effort work, but simply for the sake of improvement, volume should be in the conversation. Okay. Um, Another thing that goes along with this, and this people are going to say, well, you can only do that for short amounts of time. Read Isserin's book on block periodization. He has a part that talks about um, the retention, training residuals, that how long can you maintain or retain an ability before you begin to lose it? For maximum strength, that's about 30 days. It's about 30 days. 
and I've seen this. I'll probably have something else about it. I'm going to shut this video down here in a second. But I've seen this in athletes. Okay, I've seen it. You don't have to have consistent, hard, balls-to-the-wall training all the time to, um, to keep improving on strength and to keep maintaining strength. So volume is a factor. We need to keep that in mind. Again, something to think about. Keep it in mind. Ponder it. Dwell on it. Figure out how to use it. Okay. Again, Ironwood Strength Show. If you like what you're seeing here, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. And if you know people that are going to be interested in these shows or in these episodes, I got I go a lot of different directions. All, ro all revolves about around strength, uh, but I do go a lot of different directions with this and uh, a lot of different thoughts out there. I'm going to have more coming out. So if you know someone that could be interested, uh, please share it with them so they can start subscribing to this channel as well. Uh, until next time, I will see you later.